Welcome. I've been speaking to a lot of senators. We've been speaking to a lot of House members, a lot of Republicans, a lot of Democrats, and people want to do something. So we're going to see this uh, really hasn't changed anything. We're doing a package, and we'll see what it all, how it comes about. It's coming about right now, and a lot of people are talking about it. And that's irrespective of what happened yesterday in Texas. President Trump a short time ago talking about legislative efforts to prevent future gun violence after yet another mass shooting as lawmakers get set to return to Capitol Hill from summer recess. Let's bring in House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy of California. Congressman, great to see you. Uh, thanks for having me, Michael. This morning I spoke exclusively with Congressman David Cicilline, co-chair of the Democratic Policy and Communications Committee on Sunday Morning Futures. Let's play what he said and I'll ask you to respond. We passed two common sense proposals back in February, mm -hmm. universal background checks and closing the Charleston loophole. They are sitting in the Senate awaiting action. We've called on uh, the Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell to bring the Senate back and pass those bills. Universal background checks, and the reason this is important is universal background checks work. Leader McCarthy, your reaction and your thoughts after this latest attack in Odessa? Well, at the very first, our thoughts and prayers are for all those in Texas as they uh, cope with this. And for the law enforcement, I want to thank them for their, their work. Uh, I also want them to do their work to be able to give us the knowledge of how we can prevent this. I know from the House side and the Republican side, we're willing to work with anyone that wants to find common sense solutions to prevent this from happening in the future, while at the same time protecting due process for anyone who is a law-abiding citizen the, in the, as we move forward. And that is something that we've talked about. That is something that we want to make sure we're able to have these hearings. We're able to have law enforcement that has looked at these shootings before. What is the legislation that can prevent this? Because lots of times we hear legislation comes forward that will not prevent this and has challenges at the same time. Without knowing the motive at this point, is it difficult to say if more background checks would work? Well, the one thing I found, let, let, let's, I don't know why this took place. I know the police officer pulled this individual over. Don't know why he was being pulled over, what, what went through this process. We do know mental health is a major problem of what's happening in America today, mm -hmm. that that is one element of what to deal here. We also knew that, that the national uh, instant criminal background check was a problem. And in the last Congress, that's why we did something about that. Uh, we made sure we updated that because when you looked at other, sh other shootings that took place, one that happened in Texas. When you look at what happened down at Parkland, that the FBI was warned about it, not once, but twice. Why did those things fall through the crack? We knew the National Instant Criminal Background Check had a problem, and we updated that. Those are the things that we are looking at of how do we find common sense solutions to make sure we can prevent this, not legislation that just is going to carry this on further. You touched on mental health. Are there some other common sense things related to violent video games or even the ability of a family to report a loved one who may be having a difficult time? And could that all be part of some bipartisan congressional response? Well, I think what we really have to look at here is you know that mental health is a disturbing issue that these individuals have to be able to take a gun, go kill individuals that they do not know and mm -hmm. to, to build in that case. We know that in Parkland that the FBI was warned twice, gave, given the name of this shooter, told that there was a mental problem, told that his infatuation with guns, said that even on a, on a website that he said he was going to take a shooting. We've watched from those instances, why did that fall through the crack? We watched in California where they stopped a shooting from happening because of somebody reporting and knowing that the person worked in a Marriott hotel that they were able to stop the situation. How can we find common sense to prevent these things from happening? I think that's where we find common ground. To the other massive story we are tracking this Hurricane Dorian and as we look at the potential of massive damage along the East Coast from that hurricane, is more disaster funding relief needed? Well, I've checked with the agency. They have, they tell me at this moment they have the funding they need to deal with this right now. Mm -hmm. And normally how we deal with these disasters, make sure we have the resources, make sure we're moving the resources in place so once this, these winds hit that we can get the areas back up and running. And I want to congratulate or thank the president for focusing on this, taking his weekend, canceling his trip, working with um, Governor DeSantis and, and the senators from Florida and others to prepare us for this. 
this. Now, if there is a situation after this hits that there is need for resources, I know Congress, as we've done before, that we will act to help. But the one thing everybody in this line, and I know the modeling changes hour by hour, mm -hmm. but if you are in the path, this is something bigger than we've seen in the past. Please do not stay there. Please listen to the authorities and move out of the area. Good advice there. Now to politics. About 135 or so Democrats are favoring impeachment. Is pressure building on Speaker Nancy Pelosi to go forward or to rule it out? Well, <laughs> the pressure is only building inside this new Democrat Socialist Caucus. I mean, remember, Chairman Nadler became chairman by campaigning saying he would be the best person for impeachment back two years ago. So this is something they wanted to do, something that the facts don't play out mm -hmm. of why you would impeach an individual. Um, I think in that committee, we've had a crisis at the border. We've got challenges to be able to stop these shootings of taking place. Those are the hearings they should be having, not focused to where Chairman Nadler has gone for the entire time inside Congress that he's wasted it on this witch hunt of going forward. I think the American public, and if you follow any of these presidential candidates who are running for president on the Democratic side, they don't get asked about impeachment. I'm not being asked about impeachment mm -hmm. in my district. What they are asking me about are the crisis on the border. How do we prevent these shootings? How do we make sure other items are happening that the just committee has jurisdiction over that Chairman Nadler is not dealing with. I also asked Congressman Cicilline this morning about President Trump and Republicans making the squad the face of the Democratic Party. Look, I think these are members who have a following. They have a point of view. Uh, I think one of the great strengths of our caucus is that everyone comes with their passion and their ideas and their best thinking. And out of that, we'll produce legislation that's the best for the American people. That's how our democracy is supposed to work. I think to characterize the Democratic caucus based on two or three people, the American people are smarter than that. Is the squad a bigger headache than he's letting on, Leader McCarthy? Well, listen, the Democratic Party is not having a family fight. They're having a war. And it's not the Republican Party who's making them the face of the Democratic Party. This Democratic Party has changed. It's not the Democratic Party of the past. This squad now controls the party. And they call themselves Socialist Democrats. The one thing you have to see, there was a recent poll. What would be the most requested endorsement in a Democratic primary? Number one was Barack Obama. You know who number two was? Was AOC. They are the controlling interest of the party. When we left before our break, who did the Speaker of the House meet with? She met with a freshman member, AOC, and who put the picture out? The Speaker. Mm -hmm. She has surrendered this party to this new squad that controls it. They cannot pass something on the floor without first talking to them. If it's something that this new squad does not agree with, they change course and bring the bill down. Now this squad has even changed the belief within the Democratic Party of whether they support Israel or not. That has now come into question. So it's not the Republicans doing this. This is the new De Democrat Socialist Party having new leaders and controlling it. They may not have the title of the speaker, but they have the power of it. We're almost out of time, sir. 13 weeks of protests in Hong Kong. What's your analysis of the situation there? Well, first of all, I will stand with anyone who stands for freedom. And this is something we should be watching very closely. America has a history. America is more than a country. We are an idea. And when you look at what's happening in Hong Kong, they're standing up for their own rights. They're standing up for what believes. It's the same as those shipyard workers in Poland stood up decades ago and America stood with them. This is the world should be watching and China should understand that the world is watching what's happening in Hong Kong. Leader Kevin McCarthy, see you back on the Hill, sir. Thanks for your time.